So, so now, um, under inflammation, you just to, to differentiate maybe the difference between the inflammation itself, the acute inflammation, and also the chronic inflammation. Again, from there, you might be asked to state the features of um, um, what's this? Acute inflammation, and also uh, this. Uh, the events of serial inflammation, what happens in acute inflammation. So those are called serial events. And um, also, there are a lot of questions about inflammation, by the way. So I wrote the questions in my book. I've got a specific book where I've written them. So let me just check. OK. Let me just check. So, by the way, before we start, I would like to ask um, anyone to define for me information, what information is, what is information? Hello, Madam Toy, what is information? I'm looking for the question. So I'm asking you what the information is, the definition for information. What is it? What is it? Okay, so um I've seen the what's this, the questions just give me two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. So I've got a book. I wrote some questions in the book. I got from papers, from Munza. So, um, so the following are questions. So what are the factors that influence wound eating? So what are the factors that influence wound eating? The fate of thrombus, row of mask cells in type one. Okay, I don't know what to need. Discuss embolism, discuss etiology, classification and pathophysiology of shock. Shock is part of the hemodynamic disorders. That is why I've, I've decided that we start doing the hemodynamic disorders tomorrow, we do them. Yeah, and then discuss the inflammatory reaction give um, an account of any of the beneficial FA events. Okay. okay. So now what are the qualities of inflammation and repair? All those things. Anyway, let's start, let's dive in. Um, so we just got uh, direct to assist what inflammation is, but let me define inflammation for you. And it's a very simple and straightforward uh, definition. Okay, continue progress, all right. So now the inflammation is the response, is the response to the damaged tissue. Is the response to the damaged tissue that initiates a set of vascular and visceral events that are designed to be able to clean up any type of serial debris or infectious, infectious agents, organism, and also in jet repair. What do we mean? So we are saying that inflammation is the tissue, is the tissue response or is the response to the tissue that is damaged. So now that response to the tissue that is damaged, damaged. Um, failing to maintain what internet. So um um. So we are, we are saying that um, so we are saying that um, inflammation is the this response to the damaged tissue. So it's the response to the damaged tissue that initiates a set of vascular and visceral events, 
Now, what, what is the purpose of the cellular and vascular event? We're saying that those, uh, this, the vascular and cellular events that have been initiated, initiated by the same response, they are designed to be able to clean up the infectious agent, or with some, there's what we call debris. It's just anything that is causing something like infections, virus, that call debris. So this is that information um, is purported or it has the purpose of um, removing that infectious agent and it also initiates repair. So what is inflammation again? Inflammation is a response to the damaged tissue that initiates a set of vascular and also cellular events that are designed uh, to remove the cellular debris and also initiate repair. So um, I think we've been talking about this almost every day. We talked about the same information last time we had the physical class. Okay. Uh -uh. So, so uh, remember what I said last time, we have got two events of inflammation. We've got what we call cellular events. We have got what, what we call cellular events. Okay, we start with the vascular events, vascular events. And then we have also what we call cellular events. So now we are saying that inflammation is the response to the damaged tissue that initiates the vascular or a set of vascular and cellular events. These two events are designated or designed to remove that infectious agent or a debris and also initiate repair. That's how you, you define inflammation. So it has two components, there is vascular events and cellular events. So you, you, you have to understand these two things properly because they'll ask you, this is this has been always the question, it's a potential question they always ask, ask it. So if they say vascular events, what does it mean? So you have to understand like particularly what happens at each event. So under vascular event, number one, we've got what we call vasodilatation or dilation. Vasodilation. Then we've got, we've got what we call increase in permeability. Increase in permeability. In permeability, permeability, permeability. Then we have uh, what you call okay, increase in permeability, increase in permeability. Okay, and then you have what we call um, stasis. Yes, stasis. So now what happens is this. Let me draw a blood vessel because upper. I'm going to explain whatever I'm, I'm going to explain or summarize everything that we are supposed to talk about in this paper. So now, um, uh, where is this? So we have uh, the blood vessel here and also another blood. Okay, this is the blood vessel. And then we have got this one is called the lumen of the blood vessel. In the blood vessel, they always mention this, and I said it last time that the normal blood flow, the normal blood flow, it flows centralized at the center here. That's how the blood that, that that's how the blood flow. So that's how the blood flow. The blood flow um uh at the central and not peripheral in the lumen there. So now what that means that remember the blood has got different components. Let me just also write something. Remember the blood has got different components. The blood has got what you call suspended elements, suspended elements. To what you call the plasma. So now, what are the components of the suspended elements? In? So suspended elements, these are just cells that are found in blood. We've got white blood cells, white blood cells, white B cells, white B cells, white blood cells, and then we have what we call the red blood cells, lady blood, lady blood cells. In. And then we have what we call platelets. 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 So that's what forms the suspended elements. Again, plasma. Remember the plasma? We have got different proteins that are found in the blood. 
And you, if you understand, if you are going to understand this point tomorrow, I'm going to ask you a question. Then we'll just beginning the verses to discuss the the other topic. So we've got what we call um, in plasma. We've got what we call immunoglobulin, or let me just say proteins like globin, 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 fibrin. Let me just put it in simple manner, in simpler manner. We've got proteins, proteins in plasma, such as such as globin, globin, globin. And then we also have the other one, which is called, uh, for example, albumin. So these, a lot of them, the proteins, are, like they are a lot. So these are the two components of the oasis of the blood itself. Now I was saying that the blood flows centrally and not on the peripheral. So the blood flows at the center. So now what happens is that when there is an infect, when there is infection somewhere, when there is infection somewhere else, or maybe in the blood itself, what happens is that the, 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 the same infectious agent, it will release some toxins, or maybe it will, it, will, it will be because of the white blood cells in the blood, because they circulate, like we have, like we have put it there, we are saying that we have got a lot of blood, white blood cells. And last time we mentioned that among the white blood cells, we have what we call the neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, we've got leukocytes, lymphocytes, and indeed monocytes. So different types of uh, white blood cells and among others. That's what we mentioned last time. So we're saying that when, whenever there's infections, infections in the blood, or let's assume we have got a bacteria in the blood, what happens is that that blood, that uh, bacteria can injure the endothelium. Endothelium is nothing but the epithelium of the blood vessel. Endothelium. So now when that endothelium gets injured, what happens is that um, the, the, the cells should be the monocytes or the macrophages and also, yeah, the macrophages. So the macrophages will start to be released what the chemicals called, um, uh, let me like them, let me like the chemicals that are used by the macrophage. I don't know if I'm light or not, but anyway, it will make sense. So the macrophages, you are going to understand this properly soon. Macrophages. These ones they secrete what you call leukotrienes, 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 leukotrienes. They secrete what you call prostaglandins, 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 prostaglandins. They secrete what you call um, histamine and indeed others, other chemicals. So now I was, I was saying that when the blood vessel gets injured or when you have an infection in the blood, in the blood or in the, any tissue anywhere in the body, what happens is that the, the white blood cells, specifically maybe the macrophage or maybe the monocytes, they will do what? They will secrete these chemicals, leukotrienes, prostaglandins, and histamine, and others. So now what happens is that this histamine, they are, they are vasodilators, meaning that when they act on this vasodilator, on the blood vessel, they will cause what you call vasodilatation or vasodilation. So what, what, we, what, what does that mean? Okay, what does that mean? It means that that blood vessel, instead of, so that blood vessel will have uh, a valid, uh, dilated blood vessel. So the blood vessel will be maybe bigger like this. This side it will be small like the, the, in the normal way and then maybe even this side it will be just as normal as it is or as it must be. Now what happens is that when it is, when it is injured, it will dilate here. It will dilate. When it dilates, it's called vasodilation. dilatation. So that is caused by the macrophages that are releasing, or maybe the mast cells. In, yeah, maybe the mast cells. Let me show that. Let me let me put something here again, just in case. So the mast cells. The mast cells. So the mast cells. They also secrete prostaglandins, uh, leukotrienes, and also histamines. So what happens is when there's inflammation somewhere, maybe it is in the tissue here. Let's assume this is our tissue. There's inflammation. There's a bacteria in here. So what happens is that that bacteria maybe to release toxins. And those toxins will, will activate the mast cells that are in the blood here, or maybe within the vicinity. So when that happens, those white blood cells that are in the blood will secrete uh, chemicals like, like leukotrienes, prostaglandins, and histamine. Those ones will act on the endothelium or the white blood, the blood vessel. Or when they act on the blood vessel, they will cause what you call uh, vasodilatation. When the vasodilatation, vasodilatation occurs, or vasodilatation occurs, what happens is that? There will be an increase in the blood flow. You find that we have a lot of blood. Since this is like a small, this is like a small lumen, and this one is a small lumen. What will happen is that you are going to have a lot of blood in here. 
accumulation of blood. But remember what we said, we said that normally the blood is not supposed to move peripheral. If the blood moves on the peripheral, it means that you are going to injure the endothelium because the endothelium is very thin. So what happens is that the blood will always move. The normal way is just the same life. So now in the sense that there is an increase in the blood flow here, what happens is that there is, you are going to have a lot of blood in here to accumulate in here, and it can injure the same endothelium. endothelium. So when the endothelium gets injured, you are going to, this, we are going to form what you call vascular permeability. There is an increase in the vascular permeability. Once there is an increase in vascular permeability, it means that the blood can close, can exacerbate, or it can move uh, through the holes. Because this wall has, has been weakened. It's, it's weak now. So it, um, it, it's weak. So it means that the blood can close, can move, and go into the tissue, into the interstitium or the space. Here. And that is called the edema or hemorrhage. We'll discuss those things tomorrow. But for now, understand that we're talking about the concept of inflammation. And we are specifically talking about the vascular events that happen in acute inflammation. I said that the first thing, first one thing, first, we said that the, there is vasodilatation or vasodilation. What happens is that there is an increment, an increment in the diameter or an increase in the diameter of the blood vessel. Now, what causes that is these chemicals that are released by the macrophage and the mast cells. When those chemicals act on the blood vessels, they will cause the same increase in the diameter. That is called vasodilatation or vasodilatation. So now when that happens, there will be an increase in the blood flow. So we have a lot of blood in here. When you have a lot of blood in here, it means that it can injure the blood vessels, the blood vessel, which is the endothelium. When that happens, there's what you call an uh, increase in permeability because it, it, it will become permeable and in the sense that the blood can even cross and go into the interstitial, and that is called the gym. So now people want you to understand that that is called, that is called uh, increase in permeability. So when the increase in permeability uh, happens, what happens is that it starts the normal blood flow, like I said, is supposed to be moving centrally and it moves in one direction. Now, in, that's what happens that since this blood, this blood has been, there is, there is blood accumulation in this tissue, in the blood base, the blood flow changes. It changes direction backward and forward. So you're going to, blood is going to be moving this side, some blood will be coming that side. And that is called stasis because the blood is not moving in the normal line. It is moving in the opposite direction, opposite and backward. The blood is not moving in the normal line. So that summarizes everything about the vascular events of inflammation. Let me summarize in, one, in two minutes. I said acute inflammation has, has got two components. There's what we call vascular events and cellular events. And remember, we called this was from the, the, the definition. We said that inflammation is the tissue response or is a response to the damaged tissue that injects the cellular and the vesicular events that are designed to remove the cause or the infectious agent and also initiate repair. That's how we define inflammation. So we've entered into the same inflammation and talked about the vascular events. What are the three components of the vascular events? Because it's all this was this, this one I can assure you, they are going to find it in the paper. If it won't be on this case, MCQs are have to find it. And I always emphasize on this. Yesterday I thought I told you about treating the one system diagrams because I sent you the papers on telegram. You didn't pay attention to them and you find the, we found the one system diagram that I talked about. You see? So if you find something that is different, because me, I always show you the things that come. There are things that I can teach you that cannot come, and there are things that I know that this thing, whether I like it or not, they will bring them. So like this, the several events and particular events, these ones, you have to know them. That is the reason why I'm talking about them. So you have to know them properly, understand what happens. So I've talked about the mast cells. When there's an injury, when there's an infection, for example, a bacteria somewhere in the tissue, this is a tissue, by the way. We said this is a tissue. Any tissue. What happens is that we've got this components. I began by explaining the components of blood. I said we've got what we call the suspended element and also the plasma. In the suspended element, I said we found cells, red red, red blood, red blood cells, white blood cells. So you have to understand the specific function of white blood cells, red blood cell, and red reds. Red reds for formation of what you call the thrombus. It is important in hematesis. Hematesis. Not in metamesis, but hemotasis. Is it hemotasis? Yeah, hemotasis, meaning that it controls the blood vessel, um, the integrity of the blood vessel. So, for example, if there's an injury, you're going to form a thrombus. That thrombus will cover the wound, for example. That's the function of platelets. And we'll talk about them specifically tomorrow when we talk about when talking about the hemodynamic disorders. Lead blood cell, we know that these ones are important in transportation of lead blood cell, of uh, oxygen, because they have hemoglobin. White blood cells, we know that they fight against infectious agents, and we have a lot of them. But 
the one that is high in amount in concentration is the red blood cell brought by the white blood cells and then the next is um, at last. But for now, understand that what happens is that when there is an infection somewhere, these white blood cells that are in the blood will sense and they start releasing chemical mediators or inflammation, such as leukotrins, prostaglandins, and histamine. When this get released, they will bind on the blood vessel or and cause what we call vessel dilation so that the blood vessel dilates. When the blood vessel dilates, meaning that, like I showed, I showed you here, you've got a lot of blood coming here, so the blood will accumulate in this vasiculature. When the blood vas accumulates in the vasiculature, is what you call increment, increase in the mebate. There will be increase in the mebate in here, such that the blood can even move into the intestinal space, and that is called edema. Oh, so when the blood, uh, when this blood, blood vessel become permeable, or there is an increase in permeability, is what you call stasis, because we said the blood normally is supposed to be moving centrally and not on the peripheral. So that's what happens under vascular events, and I hope you people can explain that to your lecturers, because it's high yield, you'll find it. You go to, we go to, what's this? Oh my God, I've loved, okay. We go to cellular events. So what are the cellular events? This one is very simple to understand. The only thing that you need to grab here is that, uh, okay, like I said, we have got suspended elements in A. We've got cells in A that are moving. They move, they just move randomly in the blood. So now, what happens is that when, whenever they start there, remember we said the cells will be moving at central, that's what we said. The cells and the blood will be moving centrally. But after stasis, stasis, we said the blood will be moving backward and forward in the turbulent manner. It's an abnormal manner, that one, because we said the blood moves only in one direction. So when it is moving, that is it's called stasis. And when stasis happens, it means that the blood will start coming to the epidural. So now what happens is that you've got cells. Let me actually like something that will make sense. So we've got what you call, OK. So we've got what we call margination, margination, margination. We have got what we call, yeah, we've got what we call adhesion. We've got what we call uh, adhesion. Is this the word? Okay. Yeah, adhesion. From adhesion, you have um, rolling. From rolling, you have um, um, diapedesis, 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 aka also known as aka transmigration. Transmigration, transmigration, migration, migration. From there, I've got what we call chemotaxis. Chemotaxis. Good. Excellent. So, serial events. So, serial events, we've got what we call margination. Okay. We have got what we call margination. Remember, I told you that the blood vessel and the, the blood moves central. So we, we, so we said that in the blood, we've got two things, suspended elements and the plasma. So what happens is that when that, when they start, the blood flow is going backward and up, uh, forward, that movement, that blood uh, integrity movement, it, get, it gets disturbed, such that the blood will start moving towards the peripheral, it will injure, it will injure the, the, the endothelium. Or let me put it in this manner. Imagination and the cells which we are moving centrally will start moving towards the rumen. It will start moving towards the lumen wall. It will start moving in this direction. Instead of the central thing, central movement, it will move in this manner. It will start moving in this manner, Go, uh, going uh, towards the, the wall of the blood vessel or the endothelium. So that is called imagination. How can you remember that? Oh, this is not supposed to be there. Hey, in this manner, good. I, I, I hope you're able to see what I'm talking about. So what happens that the blood Cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, or let me just say white blood cells, start moving towards uh, the blood vessel. And that is called margination. Remember, how can you remember that? These are more like margins. They are more like margins. So your margination moving movement of the cells from the normal central central movement of the blood towards the peripheral. 
From there, the cells will adhere to the, the endothelium. They will adhere, meaning that they will attach to the endothelium more. When they get attached there, they start what you call rolling. Everybody knows what it means when you say rolling. It's more like this. I think everybody understands that. Everybody understands that. So you've got um, rolling, it's like this. And then it's moving in this direction, loading. When it is loading, again, it is loading. So it, it is rolling in this direction. So that's loading. So now I want people to understand that there's loading of the same white blood cells. For example, if you have a blood cell, white blood cell here, it will move towards the air, and that is called the imagination, going towards the margin. And then here it will get attached on the endothelium. When it gets attached on the endothelium, that is called adhesion. After adhesion, they'll start rolling. They'll start rolling, but it's drum, like that. That is rolling. From there, after rolling, they remember they are attaching, they are using uh, different types of mediators, which we'll talk about in, in the second session. I've talked about, by the way, I've, I've summarized everything that you people need to know about inflammation. So uh, they'll start rolling. After rolling, they'll stop. When they stop rolling, they will be. First of all, there's what you call light attachment, which is not a, they just attach, or that adhesion is not firm. But when they reach at some point, they will firmly attach to the endothelium such that they can't throw now, but they can, end the they can only close. So they will close it between the two endothelium. Remember, we have, we have got this endothelium and they are just epithelium, simple square mass epithelium with the blood vessel. So they are like this. So now between these two, it will come here and close, it will move here and close. And that is called transmigration. Or diabetes. So diabetes is the movement of cells from the vasculature from the blood vessel into the interstitial space. That's all. So those cells you they will find themselves here. So now remember what we said. We said the infection is this side. So if the infection is that side, it doesn't matter where the infection is located. If it's here, if the infection the infection agent is here, what happens is that when the cell is here, remember what we said. There will be other cells that will be here that will come here. The, red, the white blood cells. Some will come here. They are more like in the whole fighting in the Ukraine, between the Ukraine and Russia, they are still there attacking the same white blood cell, the same infection, the, ba the bacteria. This is a bacteria. This is our bacteria. So now it's been surrounded, opsonized by the white blood cells. The mast cells, local trends, I mean the mast cells, the white blood cells, different white, white, white blood cells. It can be a mast cell, monocytes, or leukocytes. Lu lu so these, or this is what you call the chemical chemotactic agent. There is a chemical chemotactic agent that will make these white blood cells that were there aware that something is happening somewhere. So that's, that is the reason, the reason why everything was occurring. So that these cells, these white blood cells that are there can move and go there. So that they go and they go and fight the same bacteria. So what happens is that box cells, they start moving from there via the epidemic or transmigration. When they move there, they, this cell can, this same very cell, the white blood cell that is there. It can release chemicals. I mean, it can, it sends, it's more like it sends chemicals from this. Or the same bacteria, let me put it in the black color. Or the same bacteria, which is here, yeah, this one, it can release chemical, chemotactic agent that will come here on this cell. So that it tells this cell that I'm, I'm here, I'm happening. I've, I've, already, um, I've already taken over the oasis. Um, the, your, your throne, everything is being attacked here. So you can't attack me. So I'm here, come and attack me if you want, if you are so energetic. And then this cell will be like, okay, I'm coming. So it will move and go that side. And that is called chemotaxis. By the chemical that has been released by this, the cells that are there, or the cell, the cell that is in. So that's all about the cellular and vascular events. So cellular events, imagination, addition, loading, dependency, and chemotaxis. Please, vascular and cellular events, these ones will be asked, know them. So to allow that to refer to your paper, of course, paper, of course, the same things that I'm talking about are the things that are coming in your paper. But we're not concentrating, you know, we know that. But anyway, let's do better on this one. I've talked about those. Can you, um, is, sorry, can you just repeat on the vascular events again? Okay, vascular events we said, um, uh, for example, you have any infection somewhere, you have got a bacteria. This is a, okay. Let me get the same bacteria that I'm, 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 I'm talking about. This one, which is it is maybe on the leg, and then there's, there's, there's we have got a lot of uh, white blood cells in the blood. They are secreting. So what happens is that when the, when there's any infection, the movement of that blood or the blood flow is disturbed. 
when the blood flow gets disturbed, there are cells, specific cells, of the, such as the mast cells of the macrophages, which release the, these chemical mediators of inflammation, the leukotrins, prostaglandins, histamine. So now these are called vasodilators, meaning that the vasodilators, they, they increase the diameter of the blood vessel. When the blood vessel size increases, the diameter increases, what, which means that the flow of the blood, or the blood that will be reaching that tissue, or the blood vessel, or, or, be, or there will be an increase in the blood flow. So therefore, you're going to have a lot of blood in this vicinity. If you have a lot of blood in here, that blood can compress on the endothelium because the endothelium is very thin, or yeah, it's thin. So first thing about uh, vesicular event is vasodilatation, which is caused by leukotrins, prostaglandins, and histamine, reached by the same white blood cells. Second is increase in permeability, and it is caused by the increase in blood flow because you are going to have a lot of blood in here. So you can even put blood flow, increase in blood flow under the vesicular events. So that will lead in the increase in permeability. Remember, we said these cells are very thin. They are not. They are squamous epithelium, simple squamous epithelium. They are they are very thin when the blood which normally moves uh, centrally, starts moving towards the peripheral. This, this, these cells will get injured, the endothelium will get injured. And when that happens, the movement of blood will be disturbed. From the central, what, like we said, the blood will start moving forwards and backwards, and that is called stats. So those are the vascular events of inflammation. That summarizes everything about it. Um, events of acute inflammation. Okay. So now the other thing that you can be asked about is the differences between the acute and the chronic inflammation. And these are the things that we'll talk about in the next session. So uh, this one will be done in a minute. Join, please. Join as quick as possible so that uh, we finish as fast as, as much so that we go to the other thing. Uh, we talk about the other things. So just join after this session. Join. Yeah, from there we'll do other things. We'll talk in the next session. All right.